heart, I want to take just a moment to go through with you what are all these things up on the altar. Uh, you see them every Sunday, but you may not know what they're called, and you really should know what they're called and what their names are and why they got those names. And so I hope this video will help you uh, learn a little bit more about how we worship together as Episcopalians. So I want to go through these very uh, briefly. Uh, this is the, the stack that the Altar Guild puts out every Wednesday and Sundays for our Eucharistic services. Um, and here on the top is called the Burse. And the burse is a little uh, vessel that contains uh, more purificators. And I'll tell you in just a second what purificators are used for. But those are there extra just in case we ever need them. Uh, but that sits right on top. Then you have the veil. The veil, of course, is colored by the liturgical season. And so is the burse as well. To, that tells us what season of the church year we're in. Uh, or what significant thing is going on in the life of the church on that day. Uh, so this is green because we are here at the tail end of the long season of Pentecost, and which is a season of growth, and that's what the green color reminds us of as well. And so that covers uh, all of these other important vessels. First, we have a pall. Now, you may have heard of a pall at a funeral, uh, which is very much uh, like what this is intended to be this a pall covers a a body that has died uh and so a, a, you may see a pall over a casket you may hear of pall bearers pall bears who carry a casket uh in and out of a, of a church uh and this pall which is a little cardboard piece covered in linen goes over christ's body um as we gather together for this sacrifice uh, for the eucharist then you have uh, the host. The host, of course, is the bread uh, that we consecrate and becomes the body of Christ for us. And we believe that Christ is fully present in the, the host as it is consecrated. And it sits on what is called a paten. And that is the vessel for which we, we take the bread and we distribute it out to the congregation. Uh, then we have what I named a minute ago the purificator. The purificator is another linen that is used to wipe the edge of the chalice. It has a very practical uh, purpose. And so that is what that is for. And then why have a cup when you can have a chalice? Uh, of course, the chalice is what contains the, the wine which we consecrate to be the blood of Christ. And so, uh, again, we take this and we distribute it out to the congregation uh, via the chalice. Uh, everything that is consecrated sits on this linen, which is called the corporal. The corporal is a white linen that is folded and uh, everything on it. It's much like a placemat. Um, also, I kind of jokingly call it a crumb catcher, uh, even though there's usually not very many crumbs when you use this kind of bread for Eucharist. And that is, uh, everything on this is what gets blessed. So, so that is what that is. Also on the credence table, which is the table uh, to the side of the altar, we have a cruet, a cruet of wine. This wine has not yet been blessed, but the cruet is the vessel for which you take and you pour into the chalice to be consecrated. We also have a cruet of water that is there to put in, to put in one uh, to kind of cut the, the wine just a little bit, but also theologically because when Jesus was, was stabbed in his side, uh, blood and water poured out. And so again, that's the theological reason for the water. The water is also used to wash the priest's hands ritually. Uh, I've washed my hands pretty thoroughly before the service. But, uh, but ritually washing it uh, with this, which is called the lavabo, and uh, the acolytes will pour water over my fingers uh, to, uh, to show that ritualistic cleansing. And then there, of course, is the lavabo, the lavabo towel that uh, I use to dry my fingers. And we also have this cute little spoon. The spoon is there to, if somebody drops something in the cup, to fish it out, but also for any uh, children, young children, infants or, or babies who might want to, uh, if their parents want them to receive the, the sacrament, uh, we can use this to, uh, to administer that to them. There's also this book, and this book is called the Missal. Not a military missile, but a missile 
for which uh, the whole Eucharistic, ser- all the Eucharistic services, the prayers, the chanting, all of those things are held in the Missal. Uh, and those are used there for the priest to uh, say that prayer, not uh, by himself, but on behalf of the whole congregation. We all say those prayers together. And of course, it sits on a Missal stand. Also, we have on the altar the Eucharistic lights, the candles, which remind us of the light of Christ, always here present with us. There's also a large covering that goes over the altar that's called the fair linen. And that is a a long linen, uh, and it has five crosses on it. You may not even know this uh, unless you are up here and you see it. There are five crosses, one on each corner and one in the middle right here. And those are to signify the five wounds of Christ in his hands, his feet, and his side. And again, because this is a sacrificial table, uh, we are sacrificing Christ every week when we gather for Eucharist. Now, uh, lastly, I want to just mention that we have here the tabernacle. The tabernacle is where the consecrated bread and wine are stored and kept, uh, sometimes in reserve for uh, the distribution out uh, into the community to people who may not be able to come here on a Sunday or a Wednesday, and uh, those who might be sick, those in prison, those uh, are, are why we keep these things in reserve. But also, we keep it in reserve because we want Christ's full presence to be here all the time. And the way that you know that is there's a sanctuary candle that is lit always in the sanctuary, and it is there to remind us that there are consecrated elements in the tabernacle and that, uh, and that Christ is fully present here. So if you're ever feeling disconnected from God, come and just sit in this place. Look at that candle and know that Christ's presence is fully here at St. Margaret's in this very, very holy place. And here, of course, we have the, the cruets that contain... Uh, the consecrated wine and also the saborum, which contains the consecrated bread. And that is what is there in the tabernacle. So now you know what all is up here. And I hope that it, it, it enriches your experience of, of the Eucharist. And I hope that uh, if you have any other questions that you'll come and talk to me. Uh, and I would love to, to talk more with you about it. So uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great day. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Yeah.